Greetings. The Lord be with you. We begin today again as we confess that we are in God's hands as we make the sign of the cross and say together, we are under the care of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're here on day 43 of our Lenten journey about discipleship, going in mission, the Christian's vocation to love their neighbor. Um, and day 43 is the day before uh, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and uh, Easter. We're looking forward to those services. Uh, Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday will be streamed live from our chapel. Uh, and maybe we'll be able to show you why we'll be in the chapel uh, tomorrow. Uh, then uh, Easter morning, we're offering two services, two drive-in services, at 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock. There's plenty of time to get people in, come early, get a good spot, and uh, uh, follow the instructions of the parking attendants who uh, will be guiding you, kind of like the Canfield Fair, into the next available slot so we can make the best use of our parking lot. Looking forward to having a lot of people come. We're going to have communion on Monday, Thursday, excuse me, on Easter Sunday. And that looks exciting as well. Both the bread and the wine consecrated on the altar and shared with the people. We um, uh, will be having communion by um, uh, remotely uh, by the, the wafers that were um, uh, consecrated on the altar a couple of weeks ago and, and passed out to people who stopped by to pick them up. Well, you can use those wafers tomorrow as we have communion in one kind. We didn't have uh, any consecrated wine, and we don't do that ourselves. So, and so again, we invite you to, to set aside your wafers and, and prepare to receive communion on Monday, Thursday with us. Our scripture today is perhaps the most famous scripture in the world, at least the first verse from John three sixteen. It begins, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. We're going to start reading just a couple of verses before it, but as we begin, I thought we'd do what Luther encourages us to do, start with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the, here in Northeast Ohio, the, the warm day, the, the beautiful weather outside after storms that were damaging last night. Our church camp, uh, I think, had a tornado go by. And uh, completely demolished the cabin and knocked down numerous trees and took away fencing. And Lord, we, we pray for not just those who care for our church camp, uh, Camp Frederick, but, but for those who live in the area who also may have received damage. Of course, Lord, we pray for all those who are suffering from COVID-19. Thank you for the glimmer of hope today in the governor's message and from Dr. Acton and the slides that were presented that shows that, that we have, by our social distancing, made an impact. And the curve is much better. There are hot spots in Ohio, but and our county is one of them. But Lord, overall, we're doing better than we might have hoped for. We thank you for that. And we pray, Lord, for the help to come for Mahoning County and all its residents. Thank you, Lord, that we can gather together Sunday, even though we stay in our cars and practice, continue to practice our social distancing. We thank you that we can come together for Easter to celebrate the greatest, best good news. Tonight, Lord, we pray you open your word to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, so if I wanted to, the first word of, of our Bible verse is the word for. In chapter 16, the verse uh, verse 16, the first word of verse 17 is for. When the word for, F-O-R, comes at the beginning of a sentence, it usually means because of, or this is the reason why. And so when you see for at the beginning of a sentence, it connects it to what came before. And verse 13 and 14 and 15 give us the whole story of, of the Bible, the, especially the story of Jesus the incarnation, and the death of Christ. Verse 13. No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man, the incarnation of Christ. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness when the Israelites had sinned and 
they needed to look up to the serpent on the wooden, on uh, the bronze serpent on the wooden cross. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so people could gaze on it and be healed and their lives saved, so must the Son of Man be lifted up on the cross that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Not just saved from a snake bite, but saved from sin and everlasting damnation. Why did God do this? Well, because God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Why did he do that? Because God did not send, or for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, and whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than the light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. John three sixteen to 21. This week we're talking about God's vocation, his calling to us with regard to creation. This is our last week in this devotion. And we we're looking at his call to us to live as Christians in our family, our church family, our, in our friendship circles, at work or school, in our neighborhood. And how do we live as Christians in creation? Well, we want to focus our questions on the Luther's four words. Um, our devotion is focused on his four words, instruction, thanksgiving, confession, and petition. Instruction, what have I learned about God? What is God's message to me? And what does he want me to remember or do? Well, I think those things are pretty clear. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. God loves the world. The word world, of course, is the word cosmos. The whole of the universe, the whole of creation. Literally, the word cosmos means ordered system. And so it was a word chosen in English for, or from the Greek root to, to mean cosmetics because you're not just doing your eyes or you're doing your whole face with cosmetics. God loved the whole ordered system of creation. The whole orderly way in which he created the world, how everything ties together. We speak of a, a biosphere, how everything is dependent on each other. God so loved the cosmos, every little bit of the world. And the whole world is fallen. We'll see that on Friday in the, in the scripture from Romans chapter 8. The whole world is waiting for the redemption that comes through Jesus Christ and when he will make all things new. The world is suffering. We talked about that yesterday when I spoke of the individual who had a friend working with the ISS International Space Station and they could see parts of the world they hadn't seen because of smog before. I'm sure it'll be back soon. But God, or, but the whole creation is waiting till it can be set free from the bondage to sin. God so loved human beings, a part of the world, a key part made in his image. But God so loved human beings, but not just humans, all of creation, that he gave his son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. That's another wonderful thing two things first god displays his love by giving that's really the opposite of fear fear is characterized by hoarding by keeping it's what we saw at the beginning of the covid 19 crisis as people were were hoarding hand sanitizer and toilet paper of all things god displays his love by giving fear 
leads to self-centeredness, to hoarding. But God, God is love. And he gives. He so loved the world that he gave the life of his son. That again is the Good Friday story. Jesus descended from heaven, the Easter story, and Jesus being lifted up on the cross. God loving the world that he gave his son to die. Good Friday story. We hear this message here during Holy Week. God so loved the world, he gave. And also that he desires a relationship with his creation. That whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. The word believe is from the root pistis, and, or P-I-S-T. And when it's a noun, it's pistis. It, it means the things I believe to be true. It, it's kind of an intellectual thing. What I think or what I believe to be true. My, my beliefs about God or the world. But when that word is used as a verb, it's pistuo. And it means to trust. And trust always involves a relationship. Kind of a dependence and a vulnerability. Someone gave me a quote from St. Teresa of Avila. The more we surrender ourselves to love, the more we must surrender ourselves to suffering. You can't really love and be in a relationship unless you're open enough to suffer, vulnerable enough to be hurt. God so loved the world, he became completely vulnerable and allowed the world to kill his son so that anyone who trusts in him has this deep, relationship that that he gives to us as he creates in us by this wonderful amazing gift of his son and if we knew how amazing it was well we we'd stop hoarding we'd just start giving we'd be free like god from fear what have i learned about god and what is god's message to me well he calls me to trust him he calls you to trust him in the midst of whatever fears we have to let them go to give them to him to trust that God is in control and he has come into this world and he has come for you as well as the trees and the grass and the birds and the fish and the air and the water he loves the world I thought about this love and how it generates love in me. Uh, somebody from the church sent me a Facebook post, a, a challenge to, to share a, a, a favorite song. I haven't done that on the on Facebook yet, but oh, there, there's too many favorite songs, just like there's too many favorite Bible verses. But one I thought about with this Bible passage today was the song, the old time hymn, My Jesus, I Love Thee. The second verse says, I love thee because... Thou hast first loved me and purchased my pardon on Calvary's tree. I love thee for wearing the thorns on thy brow. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, tis now. I'll love thee in life. I will love thee in death and praise thee as long as thou lendest me breath. And say when the death dew lies cold on my brow, if ever I love thee, my Jesus, tis now. In mansions of glory and endless delight, I'll ever adore thee in heaven so bright. I'll sing with the glittering crown on my brow, <laughs> if ever I love thee, my Jesus, in heaven, tis now. Isn't that a great hymn? Why do I love him? Because he first loved me. Well, that's it. He came to the world. He so loved the world that we might be saved. Not to condemn the world. God is not out there to judge us. We judge ourselves, this passage says, by our judgment we make on Christ. Is he really the Savior? Does he really love? Will he take care of me? Has he sent his son to die 
for me and the whole world. This is the judgment that's important. God's already made a judgment. He loves the world. And he sent his son to die for it. Now, what kind of judgment will you make on that? Do you live in the darkness or live in the light? Will you just think about God or will you trust him with your life? No one is more trustworthy. Our problem as humans is we're constantly trusting in things that are not so trustworthy. But God is completely trustworthy. Not even death could do him in. Thanksgiving, from what I've read or learned, what is a blessing I am thankful for? He does not condemn me. Sometime in heaven, at the great judgment scene, there may be a judgment, and the books are open, Revelation chapter 20 says. There's a recording of everything I've done, said, thought. If it was played like a video screen, my life, well, I'm sure there'd be parts I really would rather people not see. Especially if they can display my thoughts. Well, what would I do at that moment when that video is playing? I know what I want to do. I want to just look at Jesus. I want to look into his eyes as he's looking at me. The eyes of my Jesus are eyes of love. God so loved the world that he gave his son to die for me. And for every person and everything. And Jesus, his first words from the cross, Father, forgive them. And then he said, it is finished. I'm done. I paid for the sins of the world. You are forgiven. Confession. What in my life needs to change to come into a, a, alignment with what I've read? Well, the text said that everyone who does wicked things hates to come to the light. And does not come to the light lest his works should be exposed. That's an awful word, being exposed laid bare physically or in my habits or my actions my life is not perfect to be exposed what would it be like to be exposed and have nothing to hide the last verse 21 said whoever does what is true comes to the light so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God that would be my confession and my prayer. Lord God, let my life not be afraid of the light, of being exposed. And Lord, when your light shines on me, there's a healing that comes from light. Let your light heal me. That would be my thought turning to prayer. I pray God, this uh, God reaches out to you this Night, Monday, Thursday, tomorrow, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, Easter. And that the light of Christ might shine in you. That you might know the joy and the abundance that it is to, to have a Savior who so deeply loves us and all the world. Good night and God bless you. And I, I look forward to joining with you in these holy days. Amen.